lab guy here. In this video we're going to look at the sink generator outputs composite sink and composite blanking. And we're going to look at those two signals with an analog oscilloscope. And I'm going to show you how to look at the horizontal periods of time to examine sync pulses, how to trigger the scope, what time scales correspond to which part of the signal you want to look at, and more specifically I'm going to expose you to the concepts of using delayed sweep. This uh, initially will be intimidating when you try it. I'm not going to try to give you a put this switch in this position and push this button and turn that knob kind of approach. I'm going to call out the time periods and I'm going to call out the functions because from scope to scope the names of the controls may vary slightly or uh, the way they interact could be slightly different on your scope. Um, and in the end, it would not matter if I held your hand and trained you. At some point, you have to gird your loins and sit down with your scope and a nice complicated signal, like a video signal, which is just complicated enough, and then teach yourself how the controls of your scope work and how to look at these various aspects of your signals. Um, when you master the use of these functions on your oscilloscope, you will wonder how you've gotten by all this time without using these features. So without further ado, let's get on with the process itself. All right, let's take a look at the output of a TV sync generator. Here we have a TV sync generator based on the Fairchild 3262 sync generator chip. Let's take a look at the schematic. And now I'm going to connect the oscilloscope to the outputs of the sync generator. We're going to trigger the scope, channel 1 on composite sync, which is test point three on this device, and we're going to put channel two onto composite blanking, which is test point four. Looking at our oscilloscope now, you can see on the upper trace You can see the composite sync stream. That's this one. All right. And on the lower trace, composite blanking. All right. Now, composite blanking's job is to turn off the electron beam in the CRT during retrace vertical and horizontal sync are to synchronize a television CRT scanning circuit or tell an LCD where a line or a field starts. Okay, An LCD TV doesn't require the blanking signal per se. It figures out the times based on digital counting methods, but we're thinking analog televisions here at this point. So, I currently have the oscilloscope triggered on TV vertical sync, which is a function of the trigger section of the scope. We have composite sync on channel 1, and we have composite blanking on channel 2. Now, let's start in the vertical interval. I know Troy Walters had some trouble figuring out how to look at the vertical period on his oscilloscope. So this entails using delayed sweep. If you look at your scope you'll see something about an A 
time and a B time. The B is the delayed sweep. A is the main sweep. We are looking at main sweep. I have the scope set to chop. That is to chop back and forth very quickly between this trace and this trace. The other mode is called alternate. If we do alternate, you can see that it flickers because in alternate it will scan one channel then the other channel. So when one of these is lit up, the other one is not and it flickers twice as bad. You use chop when you're looking at a low speed signal. We're looking at a 60 cycle signal right now and you use alternate when you're looking at fast signals like horizontal. We'll look at that shortly. So back to our delayed sweep. With delayed sweep you first um, you have the intensifier. You'll note that the intensifier intensifies a portion of the of the sweep and we can move that window. That's a window of time. Your B time base knob or if it's a digital scope you'll have a toggle where your main time base knob toggles between being the A sweep or the B sweep and with that B sweep you can change the width of the window. You can make it really tiny, you can make it really big. Then you'll have a position control to move that window. You see? Now we're going to we're going to make it kind of smallish and we're going to run it over here to our vertical interval and we're going to bracket our blanking pulse inside that intensified sweep and then we're going to go to the B delayed sweep and open that window up. I'm going to narrow it just a bit because we can't quite see it and I don't like that. I don't know what's going on there. Let's widen it just a little. Alright, now we're looking at the vertical interval. Right now Along here is, is horizontal sync pulses, a whole bunch of them, and horizontal blanking pulses. If we dial our delay over, we can look at the vertical interval. Now, the vertical interval is blanked off by this bottom trace for 21 and a half lines. We could count pulses, but we're not going to do that today. Trust me, it's 21 and a half lines from here to here. You see this pocket? that's cut out, that's blanking. When this is low, the beam is turned off in the television. During this time, the vertical sync pulse will start your vertical scan. Your vertical sawtooth will have reached a peak at this point. This sync pulse will trigger it to reset and start scanning up from the bottom again. Notice this long period of blanking. Troy, you asked about the little uh, jag at the bottom of the retrace in your vertical ramp if that was a problem. It is not because it's not visible. It's inside this blanking period. You don't see it on the television. It, it, could, uh, it could ring and you wouldn't see it, although that's not good. But my point being that the little jag that was the flyback pulse that makes the beam return to the top of the screen quicker. That's all. So this is the blanking time and in this time there are 21 and a half TV lines. Now, um, again, so you can see this is channel 2, so you can separate them. I sometimes get a little confused when these, when these two signals are close together up here. Um, so I, I will grab the position control sometimes and, and move them to make sure that I don't have a pulse like that is overshooting in the lower one and getting into the upper one and confusing me. So we'll put the um, We'll move the upper trace up there. So note the timing relationship. Here's vertical sync. Just before vertical sync there are three lines of equalizing pulses. And in fact let me intensive let me turn the brightness up, touch up our focus. There we go. So we can see it. And if you look closely you can see equalizing pulses inside the vertical sync period here and we'll call them all equalizers. It's equalizers and serrations. 
I, I don't I call them all equalizers. So these are going at 2h, two times the horizontal rate. And they are for an archaic function which is no longer uh, an issue in modern television, so we won't worry about that. Okay, so the two big pulses we want to see are this vertical sync pulse here, the big the big period that you can see, and the the blanking the blanking window. Note that blanking starts three lines before the sink, before the vertical sink, and then persists uh, for quite a ways after. It's a total of 21 lines, and there are there are nine equalizer, uh, nine, three lines of equalizing, three lines of vertical sink, and three lines of equalizing uh, on both sides of the vertical sink pulse. So. Um, that's a total of nine lines out of the 21 lines, leaving ten and a half lines of blanking where they put test signals and closed captioning and that kind of stuff. But mainly this long period was for old electromagnetic deflection TVs to have time to retrace from the bottom of the screen back to the top. The magnetic field had to turn around. It had to reverse within this time period. You can't do it inside a vertical sink. It's too short. So they made this big window of time to give the old time televisions time to reset. An LCD, for instance, can reset from the bottom to the top like that. It's not an issue. So the things that I wanted to cover here to show is that we can expand out the trace with the delayed sweep. This is what delayed sweep is for. Okay, and notice how wonderful this is. You can really look at your vertical interval. Okay, and use your TV trigger. I'm co I use the terms horizontal and vertical sync. Uh, Europeans uh, use the terms frame, field, frame and field uh, for vertical and they use the term line for horizontal. Horizontal and line, same thing. Frame and field and vertical, same thing. Okay? We both speak English, but we don't speak the same language. Okay, so again, using the, the B sweep is how you change the size of the viewing window. Okay, you see what's happening here? Might be a little confusing to your eye. Let's go back to the intensifier. You see the intensifier? We're making it smaller or bigger. Smaller, bigger. We go back to full delay sweep, and that's bigger, smaller. When we make the window, the intensified window, smaller, what we see in this part gets bigger. You see how we can look at by expanding, I'm currently looking at 0.1 microseconds per division in the delayed part, and we're able to look at the falling of the blanking, the three-line delay before the uh, vertical sink occurs, and then the three lines of equalizers after the vertical sink, and then we can look at the remaining period of the blanking. And this is just looking at sink, if, if the upper trace were a video signal, there would be video on it. Okay, it would look like this and there would be, you'd have video up here. So in all respects, this, this signal is uh, exactly the same as you should see in your video. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Hey Mo, I'm trying to think, but nothing happened. Here we go. Okay, so that's your vertical interval. You use your B delayed sweep to look at it. You use your horizontal triggering on your oscilloscope set to, to field mode, field one or field two. Um, I don't, I, I'm currently in TV vertical and I could change fields. The fields will be just slightly different in the terms of where, where they start whether they start in a half a line of video or a whole line of video. It doesn't matter if your sync generator is a digital sync generator, take it for granted that your A and B fields are fine. Okay, so 
here we go where we can look at that. So now let's get out of this delayed sweep and go back to normal sweep and we will now switch we, we will now switch to look at horizontal sync speeds, the horizontal sync speed. And for that you turn your main time base to 10 microseconds and set your trigger to just regular AC trigger and then adjust your triggering level and set your trigger slope to falling falling slope. Notice that this um, upper trace oh we're nice and bright aren't we? That the upper trace is starting on a falling edge. You want to use your horizontal position control to place that start of that trace. You see where the trace starts? You want it right on that first vertical line right at the edge of your scope screen. From that moment on you can use your divisions to measure things. There's fine divisions down here on the center line. So we are in 10 microseconds per division. So from this falling edge to this falling edge is 1, it is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 2, and 4. It's 63 and a half, but we can see um, 6 full divisions and 2 minor divisions. Call it 64. That's 63 and a half on a good day. And that's how you measure time. The digital oscilloscope has a control marked cursors. You turn those on, select vertical cursors, and two vertical lines will appear. And you can dial those back and forth and put them on any edges you want and measure the time between those edges. So now we're looking at horizontal sync. Oops. What the heck? Over? Oh, I see. All right. Now we'll go to delayed sweep again, and we will also go to chop. All right. Now we're chopping back and forth between our two signals, our um, blanking and our uh, sync. Okay. Sync is here and blanking is here. Alright, now note that at horizontal speed you can see a faint line down here on both of them. Okay, that faint line is that vertical sync pulse we saw passing through because the scope is showing us one, two TV lines. The scope is scanning at half of the horizontal speed and so it's triggering on this pulse showing us this pulse and then it has to get all the way past the end of the screen before the trigger can trigger again. So we're looking at two TV lines. <laughs> two TV lines. Now, let's use expanded again so that we can expand that interval and look at the horizontal sync interval. All right, and see we can move back and forth. And notice this dotted line. That's the chop effect of the scope chopping back and forth. Because of we're at high speed, let's use alternate. And now the, the, the chopped signals are gone. We can touch up our trigger a little bit to make sure we're triggered solid. And dial it over so that the blanking interval is centered on the center line. Centering the blanking interval pretty much between there. And notice the relationship between the sink and the blanking. The sink tip falls. Well, the blanking falls first. Then the sink falls. This, this from here to here is the front porch. This is the sink time. And then from the end of sink to the end of blanking is the back porch. Now we can do a neat trick with the scope we can add our two signals together. I'm looking for that button. <laughs> we can add. Where's add? Both in for add. Okay. So now when we add our signals together, what does that look like to you? Let's um, uh, I'll stop that. And we'll bring it up. Doesn't that look like a video signal?
triggering funny, but that's okay. I'll turn down the brightness. All right. You see, by adding the two signals together, now you see what your circuits at the output of your video amplifier are doing. They're adding the sync pulse to the blanking pulse and adding that, adding this to your video signal. Okay, we go out of add. We'll go back to um, ch to alternate. Turn our gain up. Put our blanking back on the lower trace and our sync on the upper trace. All right. Again, delayed sweep lets you look in detail. You can expand and look at your pulses. You can move back and forth by expanding. We can uh, get this like this on the uh, on the left here. We can get a much better measurement from. You take one edge, the early edge, and put it on a line. And we are looking at one microsecond per division. We can measure one, two, three, four, and about a third, four and a third microseconds from this rising edge to this rising edge. If we're interested in that, or we can look at the front porch where we trigger, we set our front porch line. We can move this up so that our front porch is on these on the line with the fine divisions and then we bring our other trace down and we can expand now we're looking at half a microsecond per division and we can look at that and it's a half one microsecond one and a half microseconds front porch all right i know i'm going quick but I'm just exposing you to the concepts of it. And that's how we look at our video signals using this uh, using delayed sweep, for instance. And then we can go back to just normal A trace. <laughs> I don't know where it went. There it is. Turn our brightness up. Of course, our brightness is turned up when we're in B trace because it's flashing it to the screen very briefly. And so the duty cycle is lower, so we have to turn our brightness up. When we come out of B, B sweep, delayed sweep, we have to adjust our brightness. This is normal. You might have to touch up your focus control as well. So there's our two signals. That's composite sync and composite blanking. And uh, those are pretty much your two primary signals uh, in a video signal uh, system. There's there's also the actual amplitude, brightness amplitude signal coming from your camera tube. And these are the three signals, the minimum three signals that you would add together to make a composite video signal on an output. Now wasn't that fun, boys and girls? I hope at this point you now suspect that your oscilloscope has some features that are intriguing and that you just can't wait to get the tubes warmed up in your scope, hooked up to something, and give it a go. Play with it. Figure it out. If you can't figure it out, there's always the comments section. Ask me all the questions you want. If the question is profound enough, I might even make a video about it. In future videos, we'll look at other video pulses and how they relate to the video signal and uh, also probably more features of using the oscilloscope. Also look forward to a video where I basically do the same things we're doing here but with a digital oscilloscope. A digital oscilloscope presents its own issues. I don't like the word problem. And um, we'll work our way through that. Um, don't think I'm the master of the world here because even though I own a nice digital oscilloscope, there are times when I scratch my head and wonder what the heck is going on. So thank you for watching this video. Welcome and thank you to all the new subscribers. I hope you're getting something from the videos. If you know some somebody who likes this kind of subject matter, please point them at my channel. Have a great day and Till next time, lab guy out.